Well, the pre-draft visits are getting more interesting and interesting by the day, and Kool-Aid McKinstry is coming in for a pre-draft visit with the Eagles. Does it make any sense? We'll talk about it. And the offensive line going into this draft. Looking at the list that we have, is the offensive line, or the Eagles having interest in offensive line, the biggest smokescreen in the first round? We'll talk about it, but it's going to get crazy. Any weirdo wearing a mask is never friendly. Yo, what is going on, guys? I hope everyone's having a fantastic day. So we have some things to talk about here. Okay, number one, Kool-Aid McKinstry is coming in on a pre-draft visit with the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, I don't know if this is just due diligence or this is actually like, man, we really want to, we really want to get him. Okay. Now, Kool-Aid is more of an outside guy. We all know this. He has played a little tiny bit, and I don't think it was much, okay? But, you are you know, when you're drafting a guy in the first round, especially, you know, we talk, we talk about Cooper DeGene a lot, but we he's just different in a lot of aspects for what the Eagles have in their defense with Vic Fangio, the system they're running, and why Cooper DeGene is that weapon as a quote-unquote weapon for the defense because they can literally put him anywhere. Okay, Kool-Aid McKinstry... Um, likes to box out, likes to use the sideline a lot, you know, boxing out his wide receivers, um, you know, in coverage. He has really good instinct, which I really do like. He watches the quarterback's eyes. He's really smart. Um, you know, I think, I think there was a game last year. I think like Texas was a game. He didn't really tackle well in, uh, last year, but you know, on some of these flat, right. Or some of these, uh, you know, uh, these throws to the flat, he sheds blocks really well, makes some physical tackles. So, I think he is like, you know, because there's so many good, solid corners in this draft, it's really hard to rank him, but I I would say probably the fourth. I think with Quinion Mitchell, Nate Wiggins, and Teron Arnold being pretty solid guys, he could be the the fourth best corner in this draft and doesn't make him bad at all. Like, I think at 22, the Eagles are looking at Kool-Aid saying this this guy is available at that pick, and I think that's totally true 100%. Now, we looked at the cornerback position. We said, I, you know, the Eagles like what they have in the room. And I really like the depth going into camp and all that great stuff because I like Keely Ringo. I like Eli Ricks. I like Tyler Hall that they picked up. You know, Zach McPherson coming off an ACL. They got Maddox back. You know, so I think there's really good pieces going forward. Um, you know, but, you know, is this a due diligence type visit or is this like, Hey, we like him. And if we, you know, look at the end of the day, like, is Kool-Aid going to be the best on the board at 22? If they don't move up or trade back, could there be a better player on the board? Maybe we'll see. Um, but I don't see them sitting there. I don't even see them trading back at this point. So since they like all these corners that they have in the room right now, okay. Um, Bradbury is, as I've talked about this a million times, you know, Slay is not going anywhere. Bradbury, there was rumors, you know, in the off season that he was going to be moved, I guess. Not really rumors, but he took, you know, Bradbury put some pictures on Instagram of him walking out with his head down. I don't know, some weird stuff. And then nothing really happened. Now, Bradbury, everyone's expecting, I think Bradbury's going to be here. If they were getting rid of Bradbury, it would have already happened. If they want the post-June designate him, it would have already happened. They would have worked something out. Because the Eagles respected Avante Maddox that much. They didn't cut him. For, they cut him for $2 million. They didn't post-June designate him for $7.1 million in savings. So they would have saved more money if they post-June designated Avante Maddox. But they didn't. And Bradbury, I thought, you know, he's a starter. He could probably get a job somewhere around the league. So Bradbury wasn't let go of. So I figured, okay, well, he played good under Fangio as a consultant in 2022. But guys, at the end of the day, if your defensive line is not hitting home in consistent games every single game, okay, you're going to get toasted. Your, your, your secondary is going to get toasted. You, you don't have a choice. That's what's going to happen, okay? With pressure and with good players where you know how to use linebackers, you know how to blitz, you know how to do other things around your your Bradbury, you know, the pieces have to work all around. It can't be on one player. I've never thought of Bradbury as a shutdown or there's no such thing as shutdowns. You get you get shutdown corners in the fifth, sixth rounds of the draft. Okay? That's a shutdown corner. Okay. Diamond dozen type corner. We haven't the, the world has not seen one since Richard Sherman, pretty much. Okay. You don't find guys like that. And, you know, the the coverage to the 
pressure from the defensive line is hand in hand. Coverage sacks are great because it helps the defensive line get there and give them a little bit more time. But if I was to choose, I would honestly put more into the secondary, put more valued assets into the secondary, which I think they have done. They've added more to line. They've added three bodies to linebacker. I think Devin White's going to be great. I think they're going to add one more guy in the draft. The cornerback position, I think they do like the group a lot. We have to remember Isaiah Rodgers is coming to the mix. So getting Kool-Aid McKinstry, I don't know where he's going to fit in because unless they're just going to bench Bradbury all year, <laughs> you know, that's that's where I'm at right now. If they bench Bradbury, $4 million cap hit this year, so it's not a bad cap hit, but he's making a $10.5 million this year. $10.5 million. You're going to sit him for $10.5 million? I don't know, you know, but if you're going to bench him, then bench him. I, I, I don't know where this is going. And this is really the first high-valued corner they have brought in. They haven't brought in, like, a Nate Wiggins. They haven't brought in... I don't think they brought in Teron Arnold, some of these other guys, Quinn and Mitchell, any of these other guys at all. I know they talked to them at the Senior Bowl, but the Senior Bowl, they talk to everybody. Every team talks to everybody. So I'm not surprised by that. When it gets to the Combine, and then when it gets to the pre-draft visits, and if, if you meet someone at the Combine, talk to somebody at the Combine, and you talk and you get a pre-draft visit, in, that's great. Um... I just don't see why this would make any sense right now. Unless there's a move for Bradbury, unless they're moving him, they're cutting him, which I highly doubt out of respect for the player, why you would dirty him and cut him after the fact would be kind of crazy. So I feel like Bradbury is in the plans, okay? And yes, the Eagles have respect for their players. They're not just going to cut a guy that late after the draft and be like, oh, sorry, Kool-Aid's here. We drafted Kool-Aid, so Bradbury, you're gone. Like, I, you know what I mean? That's kind of messed up. You know, I don't see them doing that. If they're going to cut him and get it done and extend him and try to do something, extend him and then spread out the dead cap, whatever they want to do to get out of the Bradbury contract, they would have done it back in March. Okay, but it's now April. Okay, middle of April almost. And he's still here. So it's hard for me to say that he is going to be moved. You know, and Kool-Aid is a very good player. Really like him a lot. Um, and yes, we haven't drafted a cornerback in the first round since the early 2000s. Aside from almost drafting Sidney Jones, if he didn't mess up his, um, you know, if he didn't have a ruptured Achilles uh, in his pro day, he would have been a first round pick for us at 14. You know, so, you know, I think the Eagles have a lot of, they brought in a lot of cornerbacks, no doubt, you know, but high end, not that many. This is really the only high-end guy they've brought in so far. We still have a couple weeks left, uh, but we'll see. But it should be interesting. Now, connected to this whole entire pre-draft, the Eagles pre-draft, you know, thing that's going on, okay? Now, if you look at the list right now, it's kind of crazy. Now, Kool-Aid's on this list. This is It hasn't been updated with Kool-Aid on it yet, but I think this is what they've done so far. Offensive linemen, what has there been, like, nine? I mean, it's a lot. It's a it's a lot of offensive line. Like, can offensive line be the big smokescreen of this draft for the Eagles? Do teams actually think they have a lot of interest in that position? I don't know. I guess it does in some cases because you're bringing Troy Paul, uh, you bring uh, Troy Fontanu from Washington. Not only you meet him at the combine, but then you get a pre-draft visit with him. Um, you know what I mean? So it's just kind of crazy. Um, they haven't brought in Jackson Powers Johnson. They haven't brought in Cooper B. They haven't brought in, oh no, they brought in Cooper B. Sorry. They haven't brought in, you know, JC Latham and some of these other guys. Like, you know, but they brought in two, they brought in a potential first round lineman in Troy Fontanu. They brought in a potential second round Cooper uh, and Cooper B, but especially Zach Zinter from Michigan. So Tyler Guyton's another one there. So I mean, they're you know they're bringing in some guys, man. I mean that's 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 a lot of offensive linemen, and it's really hard for me to say, hey, you know what, um, that they're that they're not going to go this position. You know, I they're going to draft an offensive lineman. Maybe this is just regarding first round. Like I think it's hitter. I think first round is going to be hit or miss. If they move up in the draft to sixteen, fifteen, it's going to be offensive lineman or edge rusher. But they could be. They could be, with Reddick being gone, they could be in secret to make the smoke screen look like offensive line, but they could be going Jared Burst. They could be going Dallas Turner. But they're going to have to move up to 15-14 for that to even happen at this point. So 
it's going to be really interesting. It's it's this is what the draft is. You know how he's not going to show his hand. You know, it's going to get reported who the Eagles bring in on pre-draft visits. And trust me, we drafted guys with no pre-draft visits. Okay, Andre Dillard didn't have a pre-draft visit with the Philadelphia Eagles, and the Eagles still picked him. So there could be a player out there that has no idea the Eagles have interest in, and they're just like, man, we're going to keep this thing quiet. Or, you know, we've, we've met up with Jalen Carter. We've met up with Jordan Davis. So I guess, like, you want to meet up with the player, too, because you want to see, like, how they are as a person and their personality, and you want to get to know the player just by communication. I think that's why these pre-draft visits are so good because it's – it's sometimes these meetings are not just football. It's like it's it's away from football and it's talking football, but it's it's talking about life too. To know the player if he fits in that what you want to you want to bring a guy into your culture. That's the most important thing. So it's I don't know what how he's doing, <laughs> but but it's gonna get crazy. I already know. Um, let me know in the comment section below what you guys think. Uh, about the situation in general, about uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry. Does it make any sense? Is offensive line the smokescreen? You got to let me know. And um, I will see you guys on the next one. Kicks up, follow up. Peace out, guys. Peace.